much, Kyla. And next we'll have our alumni, one of our alumni, Cheryl Musick. My name is Cheryl. I, like Bethany said, I am one of the alumni. I attended CIP from 2008 to 2010. I am also the Berkeley Alumni Coordinator. So when you guys do transition out of the program, you'll see my smiling face all the time. You're not gonna be gone, so I apologize. So we have all heard the saying, today is the first day of the rest of your life. To me, this just got stated way too often. And it wasn't until I was supposed to start CIP Berkeley that I finally started to understand its full meaning. When I had my goodbye dinner with my Colorado Springs friends, my friend David gave me a card that was along these lines. It said simply, the 30th of May is a very special day, and went along to state tidbits of history that famously occurred on May 30th. But my friend David had also signed the card, remember, it's the first day of the rest of your life. And it was that moment that the quote finally clicked. I graduated high school in 2006, um, with the plan of attending the University of Massachusetts Amherst, where I had received a tuition-free scholarship. But sadly, I ended up failing out of UMass because my entire world and my entire support system started to crumble around me. It was in addition to academics, trying to live independently for the first time, and the death of my grandfather, that it was just too much to manage. I guess this would be a good point to tell you when I was actually diagnosed with Asperger's, but I'm gonna ask you guys all the same question first. Who was diagnosed before they were eight? Who was diagnosed from nine to 14? Who was diagnosed from 15 to 19? And who was diagnosed 20 and over? I was actually diagnosed at 20. Um, I was diagnosed with Asperger's, PDD, NOS, and PTSD in a routine evaluation to see if I was ready to live independently. The diagnosis was at the end of April. I had my CIP interview beginning of June, was diagnosed with mono in the middle of June, and started CIP on July 7th of 2008. So needless to say, I did not have a very good transition into CIP. As I only had three months to handle with being diagnosed with Asperger's, handling mono, as I hope many of you know is not very fun, and preparing to move to the Bay Area from San Diego. My time at CIP was filled with ups and downs. My roommate was my sister. Yes. I'll let that sink in for a second. <laughs> I know. That. So it was definitely a different type of roommate experience. But I took my friend David's words to heart, and I actually decided to try. So I ran for student senate my first year, and I won the presidency. I also got my first passing grade in college. I know it seems like a small accomplishment, to, but to me it was amazing. And then I followed that semester up with an honor roll semester. I was also recognized for my accomplishments during my first year by being awarded underclassman student of the year, a leadership award, and an academic excellence award at the end of year convocation. When second year rolled around, I still tried. But I can honestly tell you I didn't try as hard. We'll call it a case of I'm leaving CIP itis. I already knew I was leaving CIP after my second year, and so my focus became I'm leaving. Don't need to fulfill my responsibilities because I'm leaving. When I was leaving CIP, there were the transition opportunities that you guys all have now. All the assistance that I received, I, and I'm going to use a CIP term here that you guys hear all the time, I advocated for all of them, and it was probably the best thing that I could have done. But just like my transition into CIP, the transition out was not smooth at all. I was sick with various illnesses for about two years and ended up having to take two years off of school. But I also reverted back into my old tendencies because I thought I could take on the world. Come to find out, I can't. But during that time period, I was able to reflect and become more aware of my tendencies. I now try to work harder on time management by making lists upon lists because it keeps me more organized. And I also learned that it's okay to ask for help, that it's not the end of the world if I do admit I can't do something. So now we get to the best part, my advice for all of you. So number one, try. You never know how things will turn out unless you try. And I mean really try. I'm not talking about perfection, I'm talking about giving it your best. But that also means putting in effort. You can't put in D-grade effort and expect A-plus results. The effort you put into your life is what you're going to get back. 
When I was a student at CIP, Bethany was actually the academic coordinator and would be my tutor on various occasions. During a tutoring session in which I was trying to make my essay perfect, like always, uh, Bethany made me a little sticky note that read, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to flow. Bethany, that note is still on my desk. Number two, listen. I know that this can sound self-explanatory, but it's very true. How many times have you guys received advice and it takes hearing it from someone else for it to finally stick? Well, welcome to CIP. It happens all the time. But also remember that everything that the staff tells you, whether it be constructive criticism, tough love, it's because they care about you guys. I know, insert the gasp here. I totally just told you guys CIP cares about you. My advisor was Jen. I don't know how many times Jen has given me advice that I honestly did not listen to or even take in. So Jen, I'm sorry. <laughs> it wasn't until two years after I left CIP that I finally started to realize her advice was spot on. Her most important, and said the most constantly, piece of advice was for me to take care of myself. Take the day off. Have that Cheryl day. Because sometimes you have to remember that you need attention too. Number three, advocate for yourself. This ties into the listening advice. The staff are here to help you, and they'll always try to help you. So if you know you need some kind of specific help, ask for it. And as long as you're not asking for something crazy like a million dollars, they will try to help you. Number four, do not contract I'm leaving CIPIS. Try to work through it. Think of it as going out with a bang, and I do not mean a big prank. I know exactly who I'm talking to when I say this. <laughs> Number five, don't be afraid. In Franklin Delano Roosevelt's inaugural address, he stated that the only thing that we have to fear is fear itself. No truer words have ever been spoken. How many times have you chosen not to do something because you were afraid? Afraid of failure, rejection, disappointing others, or just looking bad? Now think you what you would have done if you had not been afraid of those things. Would you have run for Student Senate this year? Would you have actually tried something new? Would you have told that specific person that you liked them? Never deter yourself from what you want in life because of your fears, whether they be big or small, because they can keep you from your own happiness. Number six, use the support. While at CIP, you have an amazing support system. You have your parents, you have a multitude of staff, and you have your peers. But the question here is, do you use all the support that you're being given? When you're having trouble on assignment or just a bad day, do you talk to someone? You would be surprised how many of you are all in the same boat. A week or so ago, I heard a current student talking about his feelings of not knowing what he wanted to do with the rest of life, if it's what he wanted to do. So I'll pass this question on to everyone else. Who here doesn't have an exact idea of what they want to do yet? Oh, hey, look at that. I think my point's made there. Think of it this way. The President of the United States has a cabinet, correct? Who makes up that cabinet? People that have an idea of very specific things that are all there to help that person make decisions. You can think of your parents, the staff, your peers, as your personal cabinet. They're here to support you and help you succeed not keep you from your dreams. Leaving CIP is an amazing thing, and I can promise you that you will have successes, but you will also have setbacks. Don't let these setbacks deter you. I know that many of you think that CIP may be frustrating, but wait until you're gone. In my last convocation, I cried. I cried because it was in that moment I realized how much CIP had helped me, and had been a support system for me, and now I was leaving it. It was a moment of not knowing what I had until it was gone, and it was followed with the wish that I had really taken full advantage of everything that CIP had to offer. So take advantage. Learn from what I'm telling you, because you are all capable of amazing things. So everyone stand up. Now everyone take one step forward. Because a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and your journey starts right now. Thank you.